Hey everybody, Asian action actor here, and I am back with a review of Birds of Prey and the... I don't even remember what the full title of this is. And the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Turn it up! <laughs> yeah, so that's Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. God damn it! Why does this movie have to have such a long title? Uh, it's killing me. Okay, so let's get that out of the way first. The uh, the freaking title. Okay, I wasn't amused. I was not amused by the title when I first heard about it. Like months before the first teaser even came out. And I'm like, why couldn't it have been called just Birds of Prey? And I know why. Because Harley Quinn is a household name by this point in time, right? Um, but Birds of Prey is not. Like, aside from very hardcore comic book fans... Um, and some hardcore, you know, fans of the animated DC animated series over the past few decades. No one knows who the Birds of Prey are. People probably know who Black Canary is because, like, Arrow, you know, the Green Arrow, CW, DC TV show. That's a lot of <laughs> that's a lot of letters. Um, people probably know who that is, but they don't know really what the Birds of Prey are. So. They have to put in Harley Quinn there in the title just so people will know it's Harley Quinn's in this and she's like the main character. And I guess that's the best way probably to make like a Birds of Prey movie is to put in a character that is already well known and so people can watch what the Birds of Prey are all about. But I'm like, you know, what about Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey? What is this fantabulous emancipation of one Harley Quinn? For me, that always screamed like they were trying too hard. For me, this always seemed like DC's try-hard attempt to have their own Deadpool. And in the end, that's what it wound up being for me. And it's not bad. It's not terrible. Um, if you search reviews and general thoughts about this movie all over the webs, um, people generally like it. Uh, the vast majority of reviews and uh, thoughts about this movie are highly positive. And I do like this movie. Um, I do think it is it is one of the better DC uh, DC live action movies from the past decade. At least one of the better ones in the current universe they're making, you know? Yeah, probably the only one that's better than this is Wonder Woman. This definitely is probably better than the last ones, which were Shazam and Aquaman, in my opinion. But in the end, I'm like... And, 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 and to preface this, I actually like Aquaman and Shazam. I actually like Aquaman more than Shazam. Primarily because I thought Aquaman was way more fun than Shazam. Shazam was was a bit of a letdown for me. Um, and I like Wonder Woman, but didn't think it was amazing or anything like that. I thought Wonder Woman was nice, but it was just okay. And I pretty much think the exact same about this one. It's nice, and I like it, but it's just okay. The best, the best part of it that I like is the fact that it's unapologetically R- it's an R-rated movie. It's R-13, sure. But it's like, has a ton of violence, bad language, and all of these things that, that definitely serve the movie better. It's not one of those things that they put, put on there just, so, just to get people in their seats, you know? Oh, not counting Joker, by the way. If we're counting Joker, then that's by far the best DC live-action movie the past decade. Not sure if I count it as best of all time because I still think that's like 
Christopher Reeve's Superman the movie. You know, I give that. I I, I highly respect Christopher Reeve's 1978 um, Superman movie way too much, and I think it's one of the best superhero movies of all time to this day. Nah, uh, Joker's probably and, 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 and like there is there's like Christopher Nolan's Dark Knight is probably still number two for me, and then Joker's like number three, maybe. I didn't think about it very much before this review. I just thought of it right now. Um, but yeah, Harley Quinn is like, it's nice, but it's just okay. So you can probably gleam what my but final score usual, is if you don't want to like in skip to the uh, both minor and major. Uh, the end. You have I'm been about warned. To enter All right, so let's into spoiler territory. Run right down now three, the cast. Two, one, Harley Quinn, and... played by Margot Robbie. So I'm a huge fan of Harley Quinn specifically, though. The 90s Harley Quinn from the animated series. So I've been asked this many, many times over the past few decades. And what is my favorite animated series of all time? And it is without a doubt Batman the Animated Series. 100%. And that's why I'm a huge fan of the Harley, uh, the Harley Quinn that they have for this version. Because it is one of my favorite animated series of all time. I, th I still think to this day... It is the best done animated series of all time. And it holds up. Um, every other, like, a a after that series, they essentially put, because Harley was such a, a huge character, you know, they put Harley Quinn in the comics universe, and she was essentially the same uh, as she was in the animated series for a couple of years, you know, like in Hush and whatever. But, like, approaching and approaching New 52 which was in 2011, they started to change and sort of modernize Harley Quinn. And I'm not really a big fan of current day Harley Quinn, you know? I don't know, like, just not a big fan of her. Um, and I can't really say why in any detail because I don't really read her comics because it's not my thing. Uh, but but yeah, like, no offense to people that are like, they're, they're Harley's like, current Harley's like their favorite um uh, character pop culture character or whatever of all time it's just i don't know like the current harley quinn is different enough from the original harley quinn that it just bothers me enough to not like her very much anymore and marco robbie's harley quinn is very much based on this modern take on harley quinn plus there's the fact that suicide squad was average at best that movie was average at best it had some high points but mostly low points um I wouldn't. I'm not one of those people that would say it was it's outright terrible, but I would say it's average at best. And yeah, it's not great. <laughs> so they're continuing that story essentially, and but like they're not continuing the story very well. They're continuing the character of Harley Quinn, Harley Quinn, uh, well, and the Harley Quinn in this one is much better executed than the Harley Quinn in Suicide Squad. Uh, Margot Robbie clearly has a better grasp of the character at this point in time and she looks like she's having a much better time doing the character for this movie than in the Suicide Squad um, speaking of which it, it has been confirmed that this movie leads directly into James Gunn's soft reboot of the Suicide Squad and just because of that because this movie I, I like enough and because I love James Gunn because of Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2 I'm really looking forward now ironically to, to the new suit the suicide squad i think it's is what it's called anyway so um so harley quinn is better here than in the suicide squad but again they don't particularly continue the story rather well uh because a lot of stuff happens off screen you know like a lot of stuff i mean i'm a fan of leaving it up to the audience's imagination and understanding of your movie like like don't treat your audience members like idiots like have it have have everything spelled out for them like a lot of anime movies and series are very guilty of this where they have to like explain everything to the audience to the to the minute detail um but here it's like way too much is is like unsaid like at the very end of suicide squad joker goes out of his way and to endanger himself to get Harley Quinn back, right? Breaks into like prison, Blackgate, to get Harley Quinn back. 
But at the very beginning of this movie, they broke up for reasons. Because, like, we know that's gonna occur eventually. Because, like, mad love and all of this. And there you go. That's actually one of the reasons why I'm kind of, like, peeved about this. Because mad love was one of, like, the best DC stories, animated, comic book, whatever. It's one of the best DC stories ever made, yeah? And they just chose to skip it. They're like, it's so good, we're not gonna touch it. People know what it is. And yes, people know what it is, but like that didn't stop people trying to make Dark Knight Returns have a live action adaptation. Red Sun, Killing Joke. Ooh, Killing Joke. Did not turn out too well. Okay, so fine. That's a good point in that probably they didn't want to do it because like people already know about it and they were afraid that they would mess it up. But come on guys seeing like mad love well done on the big screen would have been amazing then make this movie you know uh but i guess it's too late for that mm. um harley is very likable she but like she has this hard luck story you know she has a lot like a hard luck story from the big, very beginning to the very end in like the Joker dumps her before the movie even starts, and nothing literally goes right to her. Not even her buying a sandwich goes right for her. And the thing is, I never was able to be sympathetic to this Harley Quinn character, this version of Harley. To me, she's just, she's too despicable of a character. Like, I can't get myself to be sympathetic about her and then just like, like, um be sorry for everything she's going through for pretty much the entire movie i was like you you're like a mass murdering clown you're you're getting what you deserve you know that's essentially how i feel about this version they made her a bit too despicable and and she even though she doesn't do anything too despicable before like at the start of the movie to make you feel that way about her already like you feel that way about this character. Like, this character is uh, a psychotic... Like, this character is a psychotic mass murderer or something like that. And I never feel sorry for her or want to be on her side. So I guess that's the movie's, like... I guess that's the movie's primary failing as DC's Deadpool. Because let's go back to Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool. You care about the character. Primarily because at the very start he has heart you know um yes he's a mass murdering lunatic as well but he has this heart um that you can connect to like uh i don't know i haven't seen deadpool one in forever but there was a a, a thing at the star where he tries to like cheer up a, a teenage girl or something like that i forget and then his thing with vanessa there you go vanessa so in Deadpool, we have Vanessa for Deadpool 1, so you can connect to him on a very human and relatable level. Harley Quinn does not have that. She's just this psychotic clown. Even Joker. Good, good God. Like, Joaquin Phoenix is Joker. There's so much tragedy and pathos and whatever there that you can connect to on a level. But you can't do that for Harley Quinn. It's like, she's just this psychotic mass murderer. Why should I care about her? Thankfully, you don't feel that way for the rest of her cast. Uh, let's kind of skip over Ella J. Basco as Cassandra Kane. Now, she does a very good job, especially for a young actress. But I hate that they turned Cassandra Kane, which is one of my favorite DC characters. I love her version of Batgirl. Um, that's probably one of my favorite version of, versions of Batgirl out there. That may be my favorite version of Batgirl, actually. I might, I might actually like her than the Barbara Gordon Batgirl. Because uh, honestly, Barbara Gordon, I've always liked better as Oracle, as the leader of the Birds of Prey, which kills me that she's in, not in the Birds of Prey movie. Because Birds of Prey has always been Bar Oracle and Black Canary. Then Huntress was added for those comic book purists out there. And she's like replaced by Harley Quinn in this one, which kind of kills me. Actually, no, she's not replaced by Harley Quinn in this one. She's sort of replaced by uh, the question, the future question, Renee Montoya. And please God, DC, turn her into the question sooner rather than later. That would be amazing. 
So I hate that they turned her into something that does not resemble the actual Cassandra Kane from the comics anymore. But I get it. She has a good story that ties everything together. It makes sense and it's well executed overall. Um But yeah, that's all she is. She like she's the plot device. And again, Ella J. Bosco, especially for a young actress, does a very good job with the material she's given, but she's, you know, she's plot girl. Okay. I already touched upon Montoya. Now, this character you can relate to. This character, like, um, and it's a very specific thing about this movie because it is a sort of a, a female empowerment movie, which is fine. I have nothing against that. Um, but you feel it especially so in, uh, what do you call this? Rene Montoya and later on in uh, Black Canary. Less, less, less so about Black Canary and more so about Montoya because Montoya is like, her thing is she's always... Uh, played second fiddle to the males in her department so she's like one of the best cops in gotham pd but she's never gotten a raise or recognition or anything about that primarily because she's a woman and therefore is inferior um it's not exactly spelled out but it's more or less like that you know uh, but in the end she doesn't care she just wants justice done she wants to do her job well and so on and so forth and the character unfortunately she doesn't have a lot of screen time but she's written very well enough for you to connect with her you know so i liked her character but unfortunately she doesn't have a lot of screen time which is fine i think i think she actually does have the appropriate amount of screen time for this sort of movie because there's a lot of characters it's a team movie you know there's like how many of them are in the birds of prey in this movie there are five of them so we're talking about the third character already and in order to fit everyone in and not make the movie feel over long pacing by the way since we talked about that i never addressed the pacing of this movie because like everything else i thought it was fine uh it's pretty fast paced and i like that um definitely a plus for the movie so in order to keep it going at that pace you you had to like allocate um sort of like uh amount of time for everyone and of course harley quinn has to have the most time clearly um, so Renee Montoya didn't have a lot of screen time for herself, but I felt had the exact amount of, of time for her character for this sort of story. Um, Black Canary is also another character you can easily relate to because she just wants to get by, you know? She doesn't want to take any risks. She has a good job. Fuck it if she's working for the current kingpin of Gotham City, Black Mask, which we'll get to. Ewan McGregor is amazing in this movie definitely the best and like the best part about the black canary story is montoya confronts her at one point and reminds her that her mother was the protector of gotham city beforehand so before batman it was black canary protecting gotham and i love that i love that there was already lineage there i love that um it was hinted that her mother not really hinted they actually spell it out in the movie like Montoya tells her you inherited something from her or something like that in that one scene that there was already a super a metahuman right so um, that's what they call them in the DC universe metas there was already a metahuman protecting um, Gotham City before the Batman and she had a, a great reputation she had a good history about her but you know she it also implies that she dies young and she she leaves Dinah Dino Lance, the current Black Canary, like in a in a bad place because she gets left alone at a young age and she has to grow up hard on the streets. And now she finally has it good. She she's got an amazing voice for obvious reasons, and she's the top singer at uh, Roman Sionis, aka Black Masks nightclub. And again, fuck it if he is the current kingpin of Gotham City and he's a murdering lunatic or whatever it is. I have a good life. I'm gonna try to just stay lay low, you know, stay close to the ground and not fuck it up. But you know, unfortunately, things don't wind up the way she wants it to, and she has to choose between just maintaining that life and doing the right thing, which is a great story and something that you can really attach yourself to, uh, you know. And the next one. Our fifth and final bird of prey, my favorite on the bunch, oddly enough, the person who captured everyone's hearts. Again, you, you can you can actually like like um look it up. And a lot of people say that Huntress 
play uh, Helena Bertinelli, played by Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, extremely well. Um, essentially, is the runaway hit of the Birds of Prey, and the primary reason is comedy. Now, what do you call this? Huntress's story is fairly generic crime story. So her family was killed by uh, mobsters, gangsters, whatever you want to call them, when she was young. And she trained herself to become a vigilante to take revenge. Now that is definitely not something people can really attach to. But she has a ton of personality. And there is a ton of comedy, surprisingly, around the character that does not put her down. It actually elevates her. You know, like the better, uh, like how Marvel movies do it. They use comedy to their advantage. And they do that for the one character, which is Huntress. Not surprisingly, Harley Quinn. Harley is zany. She tries to be Deadpool, fails to be Deadpool because her story with, like, uh, Cassandra Kane doesn't work nearly as well as Deadpool's story with Vanessa. For a lot of reasons, but yeah, it just doesn't work. So yeah, they she calls she tries to call herself and pass herself off as I'm cool, I'm the huntress. But she's just the the weird for everyone else, she's just the weird bogan killer. And I'm not the bogan killer, I'm the huntress. And it's actually a, a sort of a lame running gag that they turn into something really awesome and really entertaining throughout. So yeah, she's my favorite one. The others I like because, you know, again, like I like Montoya and I like Canary because they have good stories and you can relate to them. They have great drama, great acting. Oh, I forgot to give a shout out to um, to the actresses playing those two characters. So, um, where is that? Who plays Rosie Perez as Renee Montoya? Does a great job. Thank you, ma'am, for the great work. Contribution to the arts. Journey's... Journey Smollett Bell as Dinah Lyons, the Black Canary, do an awesome job as well. And if that is your actual singing voice, I have no reason to suspect it's not. You do an amazing job in this movie. And everyone also does a great job physically as well. And I'll talk about the, the action after I talk about the, uh, the villains of the piece. Um, the secondary villain, first of all, let's do that. Uh, Victor Zaz, uh, played by Chris Messina. Now, Zaz has been in a bunch of movies, actually. Hmm. Actually, because Zaz is like the easiest to adapt. The last time I remember him though was in Batman Begins. He was like a, a very minor uh, character in there. But yeah, she, he's like just like modern day Jack the Ripper. And he's just this bald guy with like scars and tattoos. So he's like very easy to adapt in live action. Um, Chris Messina doesn't get a lot to do here except just, uh, just, just act weird, is like zany, creepy, zany crazy is how I want to say, which is extremely fun. I've done that for a bunch of roles in the past. And it is just really fun to act like a cartoon and just go all out. And then the and then have the director and everyone else tell you you had a good job overacting. And that's what he does here. And it is overacting, I guess. I um I'd have to like watch it again and then like really focus on his performance but it's like overacting in the sense that makes sense for the character makes sense for the rest of the movie you know um it's good it, it's it's a good job um doesn't mean that you're overacting that you're doing a bad job as an actor um sometimes it, it is a legitimate tool because the thing is like overacting is you know it's a it's an overrated term like you're just the thing is as an actor you're supposed to convey emotion right you're supposed to convey emotion um in like in regards to what the what has happened in the story and the character at the moment and make it real right in relation to everything else now overacting is when you overshoot that now chris messina in my opinion never overshot it he was like right at the cusp of it um and and therefore is technically not overacting but he is going in, in the direction that is close to there but does it well enough that it fits the rest of the story and is within his character. So it does a great job. And my, by far my favorite part of the movie is Ewan McGregor as the psycho Roman Sionis, the Black Mask. Now, I never thought that I would be on board with a movie with Black Mask, hardly wearing the Black Mask. He only wears it at the very end of the movie. But I loved it because I believe this is like the only time I've seen Ewan McGregor go batshit crazy. He is going batshit crazy the whole movie, and it is amazing. It's like so fun to watch. 
Because it's like, again, like I told, I, I, I was mentioning a while ago why I didn't like Harley Quinn as the heroine here. Because she's like, you, you can't connect, you, you don't feel sympathy for her or whatever. Now, you you feel the exact same way about Roman Sionis, but in spades. This guy is so evil. Um, the thing is that, I guess that's the only thing I don't like about this character was like, he has no backstory. He's just rich, powerful, and insane. That's it. But Ewan McGregor does it so well. And I've never seen him do it like, uh, act like this before. That he is by far my favorite part of the movie. So another another of my favorite parts in the movie clearly is the action sequences. Now, I've seen a lot of like reviews and thoughts and whatever say that the action is like the best in all DC and whatever. It's been definitely up there, but I don't think it's nearly that impressive as people make it out to be because I have seen all of the John Wick movies and both Deadpool movies. And for R-rated crazy action, those movies are still way, way better in terms of the action than this movie ever will be. So I'm like, yeah, it's great, but it's I've seen better. <laughs> um, not to necessarily put this movie down, but like just trying to share where I'm coming from. It is my review after all. So uh, that's what I thought about Harley. Psh, Jesus, I, I, I wish it was just called Harley Quinn and the Birds of Prey, but it's called once again, it is called what the fuck is it called? Har Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn. Birds of Prey and the Fantabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, everybody. I thought it was just okay with a main character that was just, I didn't really connect with. Uh, thankfully, her supporting cast is much better. Um, and a villain that I actually adored but had like no backstory <laughs> and action that is great but is not nearly the best um, I give it a 7 out of 10 ladies and gentlemen the 7 out of 10 I liked it but thought it was just okay and thank you very much if you stuck all the way here to the end and this has been Asian Action Actor and if you like this video please click like below and subscribe to the channel for more of my uh, creative outputs. And I will see you next time.